praise you, gracious God, for your faithfulness to us throughout the years. We praise you, providing God, for the financial, technological, and human resources that you have provided for us to enable us to continue our mission as a university these past 75 years. We praise you for new and returning administrative and ancillary staff, lecturers, and students. Merciful God, we confess our failures of the past. Forgiven God, we ask for your forgiveness. God of new beginnings, whose mercies are new every morning, who does not hold our sins against us, who removes our sins from us as far as the east is from the west, who has forgiven us. be seated. Let us pause in silence as we open ourselves to this new beginning.
continue as together we sing the Lord's Prayer. Morning, everybody. It is my pleasure this morning to welcome all of us in here in the chapel and those who are joining us online via our YouTube medium to this uh, welcome and symbolic matriculation signing ceremony to welcome both new and returning students and the entire university community to the 2023-2024 academic year. This function combines two activities, uh, the one being the matriculation ceremony where our top matriculant will symbolically sign on behalf of all our incoming students, and you will be invited to sign subsequently online. And secondly, our welcome service, where we welcome both staff and new students to this great University of the West Indies, Mona, and also officially dedicate the new Guild Council. Of course, this year is a little different, ladies and gentlemen. We are having this service one I think this might be uh, the true return of normalcy from the COVID-19. I remember two, three years ago, this big congregation had about 40 people. It was pretty lonely, um, but I feel warm and loved this morning with so many of you around. Uh, notwithstanding that, I'm not the Minister of Health, but as much as you can, wear your mask if you, if you can, okay? And secondly, we are doing this uh, within our 75th anniversary. 
so as a university. So it's really a great, great time to be part of UWE Mona. Um, we want to celebrate our 75th anniversary in this service today under the theme Rooted, Ready, and Rising. So within that context, I want to um, especially welcome all of you here, particularly, I'll start with our new principal, who is starting at a very exciting time at the University of the West Indies, Professor Denzel Williams. Please stand, Professor, and please recognize him, please. And of course, our new deputy principal, Dr. Tomlin Paul. We have a great contingent, a strong contingent of deans, and we welcome all of them. And of course, our campus bursar, uh, Mrs. Catherine Pop Tweet, so our deputy registrar, uh, Mr. Jonathan Archie, um, our director for student services and development, Mr. McKenzie. We also have our campus bursar here, Dr. Carr. And I think our Western Jamaica contingent, I'm not sure if Dr. Prendergast is here representing Western Jamaica. Uh, it just came, speak of the devil and the angel appear. And, and of course, uh, we, we do have um, our retirees who keep their connection uh, with the university. I see um, a former principal, uh, Professor uh, Elsa Leoraini, and um, former uh, PVC and deputy principal here, uh, Professor Marlin Hamilton, and others, if you are here, we recognize you. And of course, um, our students, led by uh, Ms. Amalora Wilson, the Guild president, and all our new students. Um, can we see the new students who are here today? Do you want to stand up, please? Oh, they are outside. Oh, some of them are here. Give them a hand, please. They are the reason why we are here this morning. So we also welcome um, the clergy who will um, feed us um, sumptuously, I hope, with the uh, words of God. And our top matriculant, who you'll hear more about in a couple of minutes, uh, welcome everybody. And I hope we'll have a blessed and um, a service filled uh, with many blessings, and we leave here fulfilled and energized today. Thank you so much, everybody. Let me take this opportunity to recognize our clergy. Let me also recognize uh, members of the senior and executive management of the UWI, Mona Campus. We also recognize our former principal, Professor Leo Riney, and our former deputy principal, Professor Hamilton. All the very distinguished ladies and gentlemen uh, who are here this morning. Let me recognize you, and most importantly, let me say welcome to uh, our new students and faculty and staff uh, to our Mona campus uh, this morning. Let me take this opportunity to offer heartiest congratulations to the class of 2026 and 2028, respectively. Uh, welcome to the place to shine, the UWI Mona campus. You have made the right choice to join the UWI family at this stage of your journey through life. This decision will forever change your life's trajectory as you have become a part of a family that is global in reach but deeply rooted in the realities of the Caribbean that will make you a unique citizen of this world. Let me also say a hearty welcome to all new staff and faculty, as you too will join a most complex but endearing family at our Mona campus. 
we aspire to be caring, accountable, motivational, professional as a team, and we'll be doing everything to ensure that we achieve these noble aspirations. You are entering an academic community of scholars with all our idiosyncrasies, but despite that, we all work harmoniously to advance knowledge and create solutions to make the lives of people better. It is this consciousness that has motivated and inspired us to do what we do best as an academic community. The UWI, as you know, is among the top 2% of the best globally recognized and respected universities as ranked by the Times Higher Education, the most prestigious ranking agency for universities across the world. Since its participation in the rankings in 2018, the UWI has maintained a strong place among the top 600 universities globally from a field of over 30,000 universities across the universe. Today, the institution continues to be the number one in the Caribbean and is among the top 1% among those in Latin America, where over 2,000 universities reside. 2,000 universities reside. These numbers, ladies and gentlemen, tell the story of the pedigree of your UWI. As, you, as we celebrate your entrance into this academic community, I would like to remind you of the awesome task that lie ahead as you shoulder your responsibilities to become change agents within our society. Today, global humanity is at a boiling point. We are seeing wars against nation, increased cost of living, higher levels of poverty than a decade ago, rising hunger, global health pandemic, uncertainties in financial markets and spiraling inflation, global climate crisis with heat waves and cooling temperatures at unprecedented levels, and critically, we are seeing a shift in dynamics in global political hegemony with a curious end to the century of America's hegemonic dominance on the global stage. To emerge from these challenges stronger, we will need leaders with a curious and well-trained mind, intellectual fortitude, and a strong moral and ethical compass. Your university education at Mono is geared towards helping you to gain these critical skills to be able to participate in the solutions for the development of the future of our humanity. You are among the privileged few who are able to access high quality tertiary education. This should not be taken for granted. For in our region, it is merely two out of every 10 students who leave secondary education, move on to post-secondary education. In a world where increased knowledge will become the major differentiator between those who succeed and those who fail, we are duty-bound to have more of our citizens have access to high-quality post-secondary education, to give themselves a chance, a chance not only to survive, but to prosper in this new world undergirded by the tenets of the fifth industrial revolution. We at Mono are doing our best to prepare you for this new world. Over the coming months, we will, over the coming months, we will include a number of activities so that we can properly prepare you for this new world. We will be re-engineering our financial and business processes to ensure greater levels of efficiency and the degeneration of financial resources to fund our projects and programs so that you students can have an extraordinary teaching and learning experience here with us. We will be developing new programs across various disciplines to give you attractive alternatives as you prepare to make your contribution to the world of work. We will be looking at infrastructure modernization including the development of new facilities for teaching and learning and also research on our campus. 
we will also be developing programs to bring thought leadership to the public, driven by the knowledge created within the academy. We will also be deepening our alignment with private sector and near government and non-governmental sector to ensure that we work within the academy to impact policy that is most appropriate for our world. So ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, while we proceed with our ambitious work program for this academic year, we will make sure that whatever we do, it is going to redound to the benefit of you, our students, to give you an extraordinary teaching and learning experience. You should play your part in this journey by embracing your learning experience here at the UWI Mono and use it to advance not only your personal agenda, but to make the lives of others better through knowledge transfer and advocacy. The value of a world-class education is priceless. With a world-class post-secondary education, society will always benefit from having more persons participating in the democratic process, stronger upward social mobility for many families, greater self-confidence at the individual level, and overall, a more peaceable place to live. So, in closing, while we encourage you to have a very extraordinary teaching and learning experience at our Mona campus, I am also encouraging you, as you move through life, always bet on education and you will win. You will win. I welcome you again to our community and I congratulate you for making the right choice to join us here at the academic community at our UWI Mona campus. Thank you. Thank you very much to our Principal Professor Denzel Williams, and before him, Dr. Stanberry. We invite you to stand for the prayers of community responsibility. God of community, you have created us to be in community and to love and care for one another. You have created us as interdependent beings. Therefore, the actions of one affect the others. In this new norm in which we now live, we are being called to be ever mindful of the change of behavior that is required of us so that we can protect one another. God of power and might, strengthen us to be able to make the changes that are necessary so that we will not put others at risk. Guide us as we seek to guide. Open our minds and hearts as we seek the good news of togetherness, equality, integrity, and peace. Giver of peace for the whole world. Remove violence from our lives. Lord, we who are divided, unloving, 
prejudiced at times, inclined to misunderstanding, intolerant, oppressive, and arrogant. Make us instead united, loving, open to learning, understanding, forgiving, tolerant, liberating, and humble. May your spirit be present in us as you are in all peoples. Thanks be to God. You may be seated for a moment of quiet reflection. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the annual matriculation ceremony is an occasion on which new students are formally recognized and enrolled as members of the university by the vice chancellor. Their acceptance into the academic community is marked by the signing of the matriculation register and reciting of the university's academic vow. One student, or so top matriculant, will symbolically sign a certificate of matriculation on behalf of all new students, after which all new students will be invited to sign the register online. May I now invite uh, the Guild President, Ms. Amalora Wilson, uh, to come forward and lead you all in reciting the academic vow. Amalora. Good morning, everyone. I invite all new students to stand as we repeat the academic vow. Students, you may repeat after me. I solemnly promise that as a member of the University of the West Indies, I will strive to follow the ideals of academic life, to love learning, to advance true knowledge, to show respect to staff, to the university, and my fellow students to lead a seemly life and set a worthy example of good behavior wherever I may be. Thank you, Amalora. You may be seated. So happy to see so many new students. When I called earlier and I saw there a few, I was panicking, really. Um, but I see you respond better to your president. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll now move to the, um, the ceremonial signing of the matriculation uh, register. And for that purpose, it is my uh, pleasure to introduce to the university community at this time our top matriculant who will symbolically sign on behalf of all our new students. For persons not familiar with the process, the top matriculant is usually the student who enters the University of the West Indies Mona campus with the best CSEC and CAPE grades. That's a minimum. Although, as usual, the competition uh, was extremely competitive. Uh, this year's matriculant stood taller 
uh, than other students with the greatest number of subjects uh, with grade ones at the CSEC level and therefore has been awarded the matriculation status. In fact, this is my fifth year doing this and this is a candidate that has gotten the perfect score uh, based on our, our grading system. The top matriculant this year, principal unfortunately, is not from Mannings. And I'm sure if he were from Clarendon, he would have gone to Garvey Marcel. No. But this year he hails from Jamaica College. Yeah. It is my pleasure to invite to stand to the right of this table our top matriculant, Mr. Orville Daly, past student of the Jamaica College. It is my pleasure, likewise, is Orville, any of his parents here? Any of Orville's parents? Okay. Okay, so it's my pleasure now to introduce him and bear with me because um, I don't want to run out of breath. Eh? Mm -hmm. A first generation, Orville Daly, hails from the family of four siblings with two sisters who ventured into higher education, but they faced the burden of student loan. His, his father, a tailor, and his mother, a retired dressmaker, uh, had health issues, so that's why they faced the issues of student loan. But Orville here was born and raised in a low income, underprivileged, and often turbulent community of Waterhouse. And uh, I'm not the preacher today, but this reminds me of a question that was asked 2,000 years ago when a guy called Nathaniel was invited to follow Jesus. And he asked, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? The answer was, come and see. Ladies and gentlemen, come and see Orville Daly. Of his academic journey commenced at his local primary school. Completing GSAT, he matriculated to Jamaica College, where his impressive academic record earned him a scholarship from the San Marina Foundation, covering first to fifth form education, resulting in 10 CSEC subjects. For his six form years, the Mackenzie family supported his studies leaving him debt free upon graduation. And that's an enviable status. Give him a hand, please. He exceeded expectation in Law 6, taking on six CAPE subjects. A year later, he achieved a remarkable feat, a seven more, with all straight A profiles, totaling 13 CAPE units. Orville's impressive CAPE results read as follows. And you can help me. Applied Mathematics Unit 1, Grade 1. Biology Unit 1? Grade 1. Unit 2? Grade 1. Chemistry Unit 1? Grade 1. Chemistry Unit 2? Grade 1. Communication Studies? Grade 1. No, that's Grade 2. <laughs> That's an aberration. Computer Science Unit 1? Don't be afraid to say Grade 1 for men's word. Community, com, computer Science Unit 2? Integrated Mathematics Unit 1? Physics Unit 1? Physics Unit 2? Pure Mathematics Unit 1? Pure Mathematics Unit 2? 13 subjects. It's just mind-blowing. <laughs> and uh, if you believe that this gentleman is just a bookworm, here is the other side of him. Although committed to academics, he did not remain buried in books. 
or will serve as a lead programmer for Jamaica's national robotics team, securing four international awards in Switzerland against 180 plus nations. He mentored team members in programming, strengthening his love for imparting knowledge to younger generations, especially those without the opportunities he had. At Jamaica College, he was vice captain, lead programmer, and lead spokesperson for the Blue Dot Bots, winning the two highest awards at the national event. Invited to the World Championship, they became the first Caribbean team, that is Jamaica College, to win an International Robotics Award in Houston. Outside robotics, Arvin held the positions of Vice President and Second Chair of Jamaica College Chess A Team and Club, representing in school its chess tournaments and securing first national absolute U1, U1300 in 2019. I don't know what this is, but it must be impressive. <laughs> He ranked first in the Oxford University Computing Challenge in 2020. He achieved ranking and territorial merit lists, including third place Cape Pure Mathematics. Although making national strides, he maintained an international presence. He is a remote software engineering intern at the Australian tech company with over two years of experience. The U.S. Embassy of Jamaica and the U.S. Department of State bestowed upon him the title U.S. and Caribbean Youth Ambassador. And in that capacity, journey to Virginia, participating in civic, pro civic programs to bring, you know, to represent his country, his home country, Jamaica. He served on the Intersecondary Debate Society of St. Vincent and the Grenadines Executive Board, coaching underprivileged students in debate preparation. So he's a regional man too. Give him a hand for that. Orville's foray into academia ignited his love for mathematics and problem solving, and then blossomed into a fervor for robotics. He's creative beyond the confines of academia. In creative writing, he has attended summer courses with a PhD lecturer to improve himself in fiction and poetry reading and analyzing culturally significant creative works by talented Caribbean authors. In photography, he dedicates an Instagram page to his photo editing journey. In graphic design, he made early sketches and projects in web design. Ladies and gentlemen, his principal, Mr. Wayne Robinson from Jamaica College, gave me a testimonial here. Um, I won't bother reading it because it's essential to reflect uh, the same information I just gave you. So it shows the extent to which this young man is held in high regard by those who are responsible for molding him. So Orville has joined us here at the UWI. Um, I don't want to see the Dean of Medical Sciences, so I'll trespass to say that he'll not be doing medicine as is traditional in these cases. But um, um, Orville will be pursuing an electronics and computer science degree. Give him a hand, please. <laughs> Arvin's journey is a testament to the power of determination and the pursuit of excellence and his future promises to bring innovation, compassion, and a commitment to change 
to positive change in the world of technology and of course will bring fame to the University of the West Indies, Mona. You can clap. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, we now invite Orville to sign the matriculation register on behalf of all the new students matriculating for the 2023-2024 academic year. Thank you so much, Harville. He's not going to medicine, but I can tell you he has a doctor's signature. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, at this point, I now take pleasure in inviting all our new students um, to sign the electronic matriculation register by logging into the SAS student administrative system, and that will remain open until the end of November. Welcome again, new students, and thank you very much. Sorry, this is impromptu. I would like to welcome all the experiences to stand and be recognized. Thank you. As your Vice Chancellor, as your Vice Chancellor, it gives me tremendous joy and pleasure to welcome you to the University of the West Indies. I'm aware that you have had choices available to you, but you have chosen the University of the West Indies to be your academic home, to be the place that will deliver you into your professional futures. I welcome you to the family that is the University of the West Indies. This, this community of students, of, of, of graduates that have served this region so very well. You are now among the newest stakeholders of your university and this gives you a tremendous sense of responsibility not only for your own collegial development as students but for the university as a whole. As students you will evolve into graduates of your alma mater and you will be alumni forever. This is a special bonding. This is a lifelong bonding between you and your University of the West Indies. This year is special in many regards, but critically, you are entering into the University of the West Indies in its 75th year of distinguished service to this region. We are a global university. Our graduates can be found all over the world in institutions, performing tasks with distinction and, and excellence, you will now be a part of that journey. This year also is the beginning of the global campus. Our open campus that has served with distinction has now evolved into the global campus. And why should we have a global campus at this critical stage? It is important for us in the leadership and the management to prepare this university for its long 21st century journey. The, ten, the 20th century model of UWI have become irrelevant in many regards 
given that the 21st century is posing new global challenges to our region and its citizens. And so we have restructured, we have reorganized the open campus to create what is now going to be the global campus that will take us into the online education world of the 21st century. We are a global elite university. The international comparative rankings of university have shown that we are among the elite of the finest universities in the world. In the top 1% of Latin America, the number one university in the Caribbean, and the top 1.5 of the best universities in the world. But while we are an elite university, we are not an elitist university. We are here to serve the public. We are here to serve our communities across the archipelago. We do not believe that students ought to have access to their university on the basis of their material achievements. We are here for everyone. We are here to uplift all citizens in our region. We are a democratic institution serving the best interests of all of our citizens. We are a public university. That is, we are here to carry out a development task for this region, to uplift our societies, to transform and make more competitive our economies, and to make sure that we are living in societies that are fair, that are just and equitable. This is the mandate of the University of the West Indies. And therefore, we expect you as students going forward to take on board all of the big issues that are facing our region. There are many people who would say that among those issues are public health management, climate change, food security. These are issues that we have to address to be resolved in the best interests of our community. And therefore, as students, we would expect you to do the research. We would expect you to have robust conversations, town hall meetings. We would expect that the Guild of Students will be a robust community of discussion and debate, not only in a classroom, but in the public space. Because we are an excellent university, but we are also an ethical and relevant university. And the way in which we express our excellence, our ethical conduct, and our relevant is to prove it from time to time in the classrooms, in the lecture theatres, in the public space. You as advocates, as researchers, all of these various functions combine to create in our judgment what is the ideal student. But also bear in mind that you are a very small minority within our Caribbean world. Not enough of our students, especially our young people, go on to become university graduates. We are very concerned about this. The percentage of students from the high school system and the colleges who go on to tertiary level institutions is far, far too low. Indeed, the statistical evidence show that in terms of our hemisphere, from North America, the Caribbean, Central America, Latin America, all of the countries within our hemisphere, that we in the Caribbean, we have the lowest percentage of our young people involved in higher education. This is a very serious matter. It's a serious matter precisely because we know that the potential of a society, the potential of an economy to be transformed and to reach sustainable development is an expression of the number of its citizens who have had the opportunity for skills training, professional development and academic training. So we are in a difficult situation. So we urge you to take this responsibility of being a tertiary level student with the seriousness that it deserves. And we urge you to look back and to bring forward more of your friends and 
and your age cohort to enter into this world of post-secondary education. We are inviting you to own the future of this region with the skills and the knowledge and the wisdom that you have acquired thus far and thus to be developed and enhanced within the university environment will make you a very unique and special person. This knowledge, we know, will give you a perspective on how best to contribute even more aggressively, more fundamentally to the advancement of your societies. In this regard and to this end, it is my pleasure to extend to each and one, every one of you a very glorious welcome to the University of the West Indies. I know and I pray that you will find this journey through the UWI a fulfilling experience. As the Vice Chancellor and Officer of the University vested on the Statute 5 with the authority to exercise general and specific supervision over the educational arrangements of the university, including authority for the admission of students. I am pleased to recognize all students admitted at the Mona campus to read for undergraduate degrees as duly matriculated and all those admitted to read for associate degrees, undergraduate diplomas and certificates as having satisfied the relevant statutory requirements. Sisters and brothers, we should be having the, or in fact will be having at this time uh, a remark from the Alumni Association and uh, we should have had Mr. Duane Haynes with us. He is the president. Uh, regrettably, he's unable to be here, but uh, made adequate arrangements for Vice President, uh, Mrs. Nicole, Mrs. Nicolette Wright Black to represent the association. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sunday to you all, distinguished members of our UWI family. You look absolutely wonderful this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, though the COVID pandemic is somewhat behind us, we must never lose sight of the important lessons that it has taught us. We must be agile, flexible, collaborative, innovative, and formidable, even through what appears to be the most difficult of times. Today, as we celebrate the beginning of your journey here at the UWI, I want you all to know that though things won't go as smoothly as possible at all times, you have to continue to work hard and trust the process. It will work in the end. Rest assured, however, that the UWI has been and, and will continue to demonstrate strategic leadership and resilience. Therefore, collectively, as a community, we must strive to exercise a little more patience with the new and existing systems and a little more patience with our staff and our students. Students, you are here to read for your degree. Please know that the high quality staff here at the UWI, led by our new distinguished Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal and Deputy Principal, will provide you with the world class service to enable such. However, you must always remember that service is quite different from servitude and that respect goes both ways for staff and students. Additionally, I wish to echo the words of our very own Dr. The Honorable Usain Bolt. Do not think limits. Both your journey and your destination in life will be determined by your mindset, discipline, and your determination. You are the architect of your destiny. I encourage you all to take advantage of any and every opportunity which comes your way. Grab them with both hands and make them work for you. Welcome to the 2023-2024 academic year and welcome to the UWI family. One UWI, one alumni family. Thank you.
morning, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture lesson will be taken from Isaiah 49, and we will read from verse 1 to 7. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From birth, he has made mention of my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant. Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. But I said to him, I have labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Yet what is due to me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, he who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to his temple. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, and to bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, to whom, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and rise up. Princes will see and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. The responsive reading will be taken from Psalms 67. I will call you Lancel. Yes? May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us still, so that all ends of the earth will fear him. The scripture reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. 
So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. This is the word of the Lord.
Isaiah 49, verse 6. It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Isaiah was delivering a message, God's message, to his own brothers and sisters, the people of Israel. They had been taken off to a strange land, the land of Babylon. They were in exile. And like anybody else away from home, they wanted to go back home. They had bawled their eye waters out by the rivers of Babylon, but that had only healed the pain of their loss. It did not change their situation. They were still stuck in Babylon. Jeremiah had told them that God had plans for them. And therefore, they were not to give up, but thrive in this land of exile. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 5 to 7. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and, and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. Jeremiah told the people to take advantage of the opportunities for growth in the land of exile. That they could do more than survive, they could thrive in it. As they contributed to Babylon's success, so too would they benefit from it. And Isaiah's word today was that, yes, getting out of Babylon and returning to their homeland was their number one goal. But in truth, God had a bigger mission for them. The people were being transformed by their experiences. They had to do some self-reflection and examination. But Isaiah's word was that God was calling them to do more than just to survive and to head back home. God had bigger plans for them. As you enter the University of the West Indies, it is a place that is not home as yet. As you recall with great fondness the lands of many waters, as you recall with great fondness the land of many beaches from which you have come, as we have hailed from the many corners of this region and indeed this world, coming together into this land called the University of the West Indies, what will it be for you? A place of struggle, a place to barely survive, or will it be a place where you will thrive? As the people considered their time away from their homeland, their first questions were ones about identity. Who were they? They needed to get to know themselves, indeed, who they were. There is a certain hall 
that has at its gateway its famous motto, Know thyself. The people of Israel as they considered themselves in this land that was not home, had to get to know themselves. As they journeyed through the struggles in the strange land, who were they? An important thing that they found about themselves, they were God's people. They found themselves clearly articulating that they belonged to the living God. If they were students of the University of the West Indies, I wonder if they would think of themselves just as bodies that live and breathe and worry over each day, partying all night, texting away, studying, and then collapsing at the end of the exam season. No, not them. They found that they were far more than that. They realized how valuable they were. They were God's people, made in God's image and likeness. And they never need nobody to tell them, so they look good. When they looked in their mirrors, they saw God's image and likeness, God's beauty radiating from within and out to the world. They were beautiful, strong and resilient, full of talent, and of course, academically strong. But then they also had to consider which God they were serving in this land away from home? Which God were they going to serve in this land away from home? Was it the living God in whom there was life and hope and strength? God who promised to be with them always, even to the end of the earth? Or was it to be some idol an idol that exploited their need for acceptance, fed them with the opium of partying and groupthink, but dropped them when the times became rough. Then they also had to consider, having become very clear in their minds that they were serving the living God, what did the living God desire of them? What was their mission in this land away from home? Now, if you and I consider what we would want to do if we were taken away from our homes and sent to a strange land, I don't know about you, but my first goal would be to find a way back home to start a plan and plot the path to get there. Simple. If they were exiled in exile, then clearly the primary objective must be to work towards getting back home, to use every resource of exile to craft that way back home. But friends, those are goals that only benefit the individual. Those are selfish and short-sighted goals. Those are goals that only are focused on our personal concerns. Instead, God was asking the people to look out, to look beyond themselves, and very importantly, to think big, very, very big. Through the prophet Isaiah, God was telling God's people that the goal was not just personal success. The goal was for them to become statesmen and stateswomen. 
whose eyes were not just focused on getting back home to Israel, but whose eyes were now on the world. Their mission was to be God's ambassadors to the world, to use their experiences, to use the faith that they had found in their time as they journeyed through exile, the experiences that had now grown them, the experiences that had now molded them, to use those to transform the world. They were to use the skills and the talents that they had honed in Babylon for the common good, to see their time of study as preparation for God's greater mission, that they were not just getting themselves ready to go and make enough money to drive a fancy car, to live in a house on the hill or the seaside, but that their training in their field of study would become an opportunity for them to demonstrate what honesty and integrity are, what wise, what wise and ethical decision-making looks like, what the care for creation and for their fellow brothers and sisters should be. Friends, you, you can't leave the hall without understanding how to care for others. When you see a fellow member of your hall come on and you know them to have no money that week, and you know that their cupboard is bare, and you know they haven't eaten anything from the day before. It is God that moves in us, that will say to someone, come and share this one party with me. I will break it in half so that we can both be fed. Friends, we cannot live here in this land away from home without learning how to love and care for even those who might be a little bit difficult. But you, but you know, God's love embraces all. And we learn as we journey in our classes, in the hallways, in the labs, we learn what love is really all about. We learn how to forgive. We learn how to show mercy. I know you will say I should say that to the lecturers. We learn how to offer care and respect to every single individual as we journey here in this land away from home. They were learning how a solid relationship with the living God can bring meaning to their lives showing them that this life was more than the academic successes. Life lived in God was a life worth living. They were to think big. How through their skills and talents, how they could craft solutions to the problems of the communities and the nations, and so transform the lives of people. They were going to research and write theses that would build a better understanding of issues and systems as they diligently pursued pure research. They were going to apply that research to craft solutions to positively impact the lives of people, to provide safe food, safe infrastructure, and a safe environment. They were going to craft new methods of social engagement so that the neediest persons would be given a hand up instead of a hand out. They were going to serve those communities with care and love and understanding, giving their best efforts so that justice and good health would lead to greater productivity. They were going to do their part 
to build up the skills, talents, and values of the society as they pulled out the knowledge that is already in the minds of the people to inspire another generation to come to study here in this land away from home. But more than all their skills and talents, they were going to share the faith that they had developed in exile. The faith that they had to draw upon when the fees that were due, when the fees were due and the money was scarce, the faith that saw them through the long nights and the demands of classes, the faith that told them never to give up, that reminded them that God had a plan for them to build them up. Jeremiah reminds us, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then, when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. God promised that God would be present in the land away from home, even when everyone else could not be found when the times of trouble came. The people were being prepared to be sent out with more than a head full of knowledge. They had a purpose, which was to be used for far more than themselves. They were being sent out with a heart that cared for others, to see and to value other people as fellow brothers and sisters. They were being sent out with their faith relationship with the living God, to share God who had taken them through their time in exile, their God who had prepared them for mission in the world. For some of us, the university experience and the university can become a place of exile where we feel cut off from all that we have ever known. But friends, what will we do here? Will we seek to prepare ourselves for life, for service? Will the experience that we, will the experience that we have strengthen us and shape us for life's big stage? We stand on the threshold we stand at the beginning of another school year, of a new course of study for some, new careers for others, all being pursued in this place, the University of the West Indies. As you journey through, remember to seek the welfare of this university, because in its success, you will find your success. As you build it, so too will you hone your skills and talents. May your journey have a vision and a purpose. May you seek that for which God has called you here. May you give God more than a passing thought 
but rather seek God out and find that God is here. God is always present with you, that God will never leave you nor forsake you, and that you can place your lives, your hopes, and yourselves in God's hands. May you be a light shining out from the West, out into the world, as you prepare yourselves for God's big mission. Welcome to the University of the West Indies. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for that which we have freely given to you and to your cause. May you add your divine blessing on it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, indeed. Let us turn to God to make our prayers of intercession. Compassionate God, we come before you at the start of a new academic asking for your mercy, your grace, and your peace. We pray for your continual presence with us and for your protection as we begin this new academic year. God of wisdom, we pray for our university community. We lift up those in leadership who govern this community of scholars, the pro vice chancellor, the principal, Professor Denzel Williams, deputy principal, Dr. Tomlin Paul, campus registrar, Dr. Donovan Stanbury, campus bursar, Mrs. Catherine Park Thwaites, President and members of the Guild of Council, deans, heads of departments, all managers, administrators, lecturers, security personnel, chaplains, and all who serve this UE family. Please draw us closer to you and grant wisdom and discernment for how to lead this university at this time. Lord, bless the UE family. May we develop a culture of trustworthiness and peace. Protecting God, we pray that you may protect us along this journey. We ask you, O oh God, to bless the family and friends of each student and staff member. We pray that you may provide for the needs of students, staff, and their families. We pray for the countries represented on Mona campuses. On the Mona campus, Lord, in spite of the immense challenges countries in the Caribbean region and worldwide face, we thank you. Guide government leaders, affected families, and development organizations to move forward with a collective vision for a better life. Equip us for all the challenges of environmental health and weather issues. We pray for the UE campuses. We pray for the Mona campus and our colleagues at Cave Hill, St. Augustine, Five Islands, the UE Global Campus, sites all over the university centers across the Caribbean that this university will serve as an integrating institution for the region. 
We pray for the agencies, bodies related to UWE. We are not alone. As we stand on the shoulders of those who have established and built up this university. 75 years ago, we are thankful for all the alumni and other agencies who support us in so many ways. We pray for the undergirding and financial support needed to maintain and enhance the work of this noble institution of learning. Hear or cry, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. seated. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a very strong contingent from the Jamaica College, headed by their principal, Mr. Wayne Robinson. Can the contingent stand? They come here to support um, the top matriculant. Give them a hand, please. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are at this part of the service where we are going to um, invite the leadership of the Mona Guild uh, for the 2023-2024 year. Uh, to come forward here at the altar and line up from right to left as the members of the clergy uh, will pray for your consecration as you embark on another year of activities. I'm going to read the names and as I call the name you can just come forward please and I think that we're going to synchronize, I can't see the, <laughs> the, the, the screen but your pictures will also appear on screen as we call. So of course we have to start with the president, Miss Amalora Wilson, and you can give them a hand as they come. <laughs> Martinil Bartley, Vice President Services and Special Projects. Asha Garwood, Vice President Property 
and special initiatives. Sherlyn Gittens, Secretary. Javon Hunter, Treasurer. Shaquille Benty, Postgraduate Rep. Raynor Honigan, Cultural and Entertainment Affairs Chairperson. Cardella Hilton, External Affairs Chairperson. Okay. Tajana Taylor, Public Relations Officer. Rachel Minto Walker, Games Committee Chairperson. Kimani Gale, Publications Chairperson. Ronald Burke, WJC Chairperson. And Rahina Mitchell. And uh, Trudy and Sterling, a legal consultant. Now to the reps from the various faculties. Akira Camber, Computing Studies student rep. <laughs> Serene Shirley, Faculty of Engineering rep. <laughs> Zante Thomas, Faculty of Humanities and Education rep. <laughs> Savian McFadden, Faculty of Law rep. Rohan McNelly, Faculty of Medical Sciences Rep. <laughs> Catherine Lloyd, Faculty of Science and Technology Rep. <laughs> Perry Cummins Jr., Faculty of Social Sciences Rep. <laughs> Kahil Yearwood, Faculty of Sports Rep. <laughs> Sports are better than that man. Sharia Bowen, Institute of Gender and Development Studies. <laughs> Mani Jack, UTC Rep. <laughs> we now move to the All Representatives. Mark Hemans is at Preston Hall Chair. <laughs> a Johnny Campbell, Agent Preston Deputy <laughs> Hall Chair. Shaquille Holt, uh, Chancellor Hall Chair. <laughs> Roshan Winter, Chancellor Hall Deputy Chair. <laughs> Daniel Thomas, El Salira and the Towers Hall Chair. <laughs> Dina Dawkins, El Salira and the Towers Deputy Hall Chair. Crystal Whitaker, George Alain Hall Chair. <laughs> Leilani McLawrence, George Alain Deputy Chair. <laughs> Micah Cumberbatch, Harvin Hall Chair. <laughs> Tony Ann Ward, Irvin Hall Deputy Chair. Shania Gordon, Laser Robinson Hall Chair. <laughs> Kaylee Reese, Leslie Hall Robinson, Deputy Hall Chair. <laughs> Shardane Parkins, Mary C. Cole, Hall Chair. <laughs> Shakira Murray, Mary C. Cole, Deputy Hall Chair. Graham Garfield Evangelist, Rex Neckerford Hall Chair. <laughs> Khalid Fleary, Rex Neckerford Deputy Hall Chair. <laughs> Gawain Wright, Taylor Hall Chair. 
Caris Jer Jeremy, De uh, Taylor Hall Deputy, Hall Chair. And Whitney Box, uh, WJC Hall Chair. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the executive of the uh, Mona Gill for 2023 2024. And I invite the ministers to uh, bless them. Inasmuch as the members of the Guild of Students have elected you to serve in your respective positions, do you without reservation accept the charge that has been placed upon you? We do. Do you promise that you will fulfill the obligations of your office without compromise and in the interest of the members of the Guild of Students in particular and the wider university community in general? We do. Do you promise that you will be open to wise counsel and that you will remain in touch with the source from which comes inspiration, encouragement, and strength in order to act with courage, integrity, and full commitment? We so promise. To the members of the congregation, as members of this university community, community do you promise to critically support the duly elected members of the Guild Council, and if you do so promise, please show by standing. My brothers and sisters, you have duly dedicated yourselves to serve the student body in your respective offices. President, and members of the Guild Council for the academic year 2023-2024. Go forth to perform your duties with courage, with impartiality, and with dedication. You may now turn and face the congregation. Let us pray. As chaplains, we offer ourselves as servants of God to provide counsel, support, guidance, and spiritual undergirding as the needs arise, and we place you all in God's hands.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the last frontier now. This is now the candle lighting ceremony. As you all know, the University of the West Indies is in fact a regional institution supported <coughs> by 16 contributing countries with Bermuda as an associate member. And at this part of the ceremony, um, students have been selected to come forward and symbolically uh, light a candle um, for each, on behalf of each country that make up this wonderful University of the West Indies. So we are inviting those so designated to come forward and take your place while they are doing that. I want to congratulate those among us from St. Kitts and Nevis who will be celebrating their independence on September 19th and Belize on September 21. So, I hope these lighters will want to be used to light these candles and nothing else. So we'll invite, starting with Anguilla, to my extreme right, to light the first candle. Antigua and Bermuda. You can give them a hand while they do that, you know. Bahamas. <laughs> Barbados. <laughs> Belize. <laughs> British Virgin Islands. <laughs> Cayman Islands. <laughs> Dominica. Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, Turks and Caicos Islands, Jamaica, <laughs> and of course, uh, the University of the West Indies, UWI. Thank you very much. May these light never extinguish. So, we're going to now invite. the university choir to lead us in the singing of the anthem of the university, university song. And at this time, our lighters, we can proceed back to our seats and sing from there. Thank you all very much and God bless you all. From Caribbean islands, Guyana and Belize Was born our university of the West Indies Proud symbol of our oneness, our strength and unity With vision clear you came along to shape our destiny To follow after knowledge, the truth you seek and find to teach us love and justice, to liberate the mind. Today we see you rising, a light out of the West, that guides the feet of all who seek the noblest and the best. There is a light that is rising from out of the West, and proud bearers of that light are we. So we follow those whose work has brought glory to your name, making a better world for you and for me. As from your noble portals your sons and daughters go to face a world of challenges, to conquer every foe, we'll work and play together, and as time marches on, 
We'll never forget the lesson that the whole are we are one. UWI, we praise you. We lift our voice in song. We let our big drums roll loud and steel pants swing ping pong. For you have shaped our lives so that we can truly say to you we owe our gratitude, a debt we can't repay. There is a light that is rising from out of the west, and proud bearers of that light are we. So we follow those whose work has brought glory to your name, making a better world for you and for me. This is our university of the West in days. This is indeed the University of the West Indies, and we thank God that. Uh, uh, this university is continuing to make a big impact, not only in Jamaica and the Caribbean, but indeed the world. We have come to the end of our time here together. What a morning it has been. This is a great morning of unity and uh, just togetherness. And we give God thanks. I want to tell you before you leave uh, with the closing prayer and the, and the uh, recessional, that the university singers who did very, very well this morning. Congratulations, <laughs> university singers. They will be hosting auditions for the entire month of September. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. I'm sure you will want to come and test out your voice. We invite all interested students who sing or play a musical instrument to include like the piano, the keyboard, uh, the drums, the guitar, uh, organ, uh, to reach out uh, to uh, the University of the West Indies singers, the university singers. Send us an email at info.uesingers. You may want to write that down. That's info.uesingers at gmail.com to reschedule your individual, or rather to schedule your individual audition. So that's info.uesingers at gmail.com. And that's for your auditions. And also, we want to say that the, uh, the chaplains did well today also. And <clears throat> that's um, self-praise there. Uh, but <laughs> we want you to be aware that the chaplains are meeting every Sunday in this place uh, for a service. And so you will want to come and participate in services on the weekend. The schedule is right there at the chaplain's office on the door, and that is between the uh, KFC and uh, uh, the Jamaica National uh, Building. Sisters and brothers, Let's pause as we give God thanks for a wonderful morning together. Good and gracious God, we bow in your presence and we thank you. This has been just a great morning of praise and thanksgiving to you, a great morning of celebration of the University of the West Indies, a great morning of uh, uh, just acknowledging great work and great service and great performance, we thank you. We have a lot to give God thanks for, and we honor you. What a great day. And so, as we go into the rest of this day, we go in your name and for your sake. Be with us. Guide us throughout the course of this year, and we pray for great, great performances, nuff, nuff A's, high GPAs, wonderful parents who will reward us when we do well. Amen. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Send us now in peace as we make this new start. And may the blessing of God who creates, redeems, transforms, renews, and sanctifies all life be with us all. Amen. 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 What good?